Section 2 of Library of the World's Best Mystery and Detective Stories, Volume 6. This is a LibriVox recording. All the LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Martin Gradwell. Library of the World's Best Mystery and Detective Stories, Volume 6, by Julian Hawthorne, Editor. Section 2. The Dishonest Goldsmith and the Ingenious Painter, from the Turkish. It is narrated by a person of veracity that once, in the land of Adjem, Persia, a master goldsmith and a painter of talent, for a time formed an association together, and lived on terms of brotherly intimacy. After this, being disposed to travel, they entered into a covenant to remain faithful to each other, and not to go one step beyond their association, that one should not act without the consent of the other, nor in any manner be treacherous to the other's interests. Having made this agreement, they set out upon their journey, their means being rather limited. On coming to a great convent, they put up there as guests. The monks of that convent, being pleased with them, showed them respect and tokens of esteem. They, particularly the painter, covered the walls of the convent with curious paintings, and the monks paid him much attention, and begged them to remain a while with them. Having assented to this, they spent some time in the convent, and the monks placed so much confidence in them as to disclose to them the places containing the gold and silver idols of the convent. So one day they collected all these idols, and at night they made their escape with them. On reaching a city in a country of Islamites, they took up their abode there, when, according to their agreement, they put the gold and silver into a box, and spent only as much of it as their necessities required. It so happened that the goldsmith married a parson's daughter, and the expenses of the association were thus increased. In the course of time, the wife bore her husband two children, and one day, when the other was absent, the goldsmith opened the box containing the treasures, and, stealing away one half of the gold and silver, carried it to his own dwelling. On the painter's return, he remarked that the box had been opened and a portion of the contents taken out. When he questioned the goldsmith about it, the latter said that he had not touched it and denied the theft. Now the painter was a cunning fellow, and he immediately saw that the matter required good management. In the vicinity of their residence lived a huntsman, to whom he applied to procure him two bear cubs, for which he promised to pay him handsomely. The hunter consenting, he was soon furnished with the cubs, which the painter took and tamed. There was in that city also a carpenter, and, going to his shop, he bought of him the figure of a man made out of wood, and returned home. He then painted the figure, so that it was quite impossible to tell it from the goldsmith. This he put in a place by itself, and when the bear cubs were to be fed, he always had it done from the hand of the figure, until they became in time so accustomed to the sight of it, as to treat it like their father or mother. One day, the painter invited the goldsmith to his house, and he accordingly came, bringing his two young sons with him. He treated them hospitably, and they passed the night there. On the following day he put the sons of the goldsmith in a secret part of his house, and when the father asked permission to take his leave, he inquired for his sons. The painter replied, 
an occurrence has happened which may serve as an example to others. I am really ashamed to relate it to you. What is it? asked the goldsmith, with surprise. The painter added, Whilst your sons were at play, and running about, they both became suddenly metamorphosed into the form of two bear cubs, and the affliction which has befallen these two innocent children must have been sent on account of some great sin. The goldsmith became excessively grieved. What does this mean? exclaimed he. And why have you done this to my sons? They quarrelled, and finally both went before the caddy of the place. The caddy and his associates were greatly surprised at the strangeness of the case. What can this mean? exclaimed they all. Never has such a thing happened before since the coming of Mohammed. What are the evidences of this remarkable occurrence? I am quite as much astonished at it as yourselves, answered the painter. But, if you will allow me, I will bring the two metamorphosed children into your presence. The case will then be clear, and we will see whether or not they recognize their father. The cadi and his company at once agreed to have the cubs brought before them. Let us see, said they, and judge for ourselves. The painter had cunningly kept the cubs hungry from the preceding night and he now brought them from his house to the Mekemer of the judge, and placed them opposite the goldsmith. The cubs, as soon as they saw the latter, supposing him to be the same figure which the painter had made, rushed toward him, licked his feet, and began caressing him. The cadi and those with him were much affected at the sight, and exclaimed that if the cubs had not recognized their father in the goldsmith, they certainly would not act as they did. The goldsmith was bewildered between doubt and conviction, and so, taking the two cubs with him, he returned to the house of the painter, where he begged pardon for his fault and avowed it. He also returned the gold and silver effects which he had stolen from the box, and placed them all before the painter. At the same time he acknowledged his fault, and repented of what he had done. He likewise begged that the painter would pray to God to restore his sons to man's farm again. The painter now led away the cubs, and putting them into the same house in which he had confined the goldsmith's children, he sat up all the following night, apparently engaged in prayer. Early the next morning he went for the boys, and, taking them by the hand, brought them to their father, exclaiming, God be praised, our prayers have been accepted, and delivered them up to their parent. The goldsmith was very much rejoiced, and offered many thanks to the painter, after which he carried his sons home. Now news of this occurrence became spread about in the city, and it was told how the two sons of the goldsmith, after becoming metamorphosed, were again restored to human shape. Upon this the caddy had the painter sighted before him, and required him to relate the truth about the matter. The painter informed him that such and such a compact had been made between himself and the goldsmith that the latter had acted so-and-so toward him, but that he was unable to prove the charge. So I got up a ruse, said he, to make him acknowledge the theft of the gold and silver, and succeeded by my skill in the art of painting. Barik Allah! exclaimed all those who heard the recital. A person's talents should be such as these. They added also many compliments and praises to the painter on the ingenuity of his thought, and his success in laying so wise a plan. End of section 2 Recording by Martin Gradwell